live in the dungeon. This is the Dream Warrior Review. I'm Kurt Thomas. I'm Mick Strawn. I want to say this, that from the dungeon, this is from the dungeon, uh, our producer here, Kurt Thomas, is is a genius. Wait, I'm a producer? He, oh, okay. he does a great <laughs> job. He does just the right amount of sound effects and 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 keeps us honest and uh, he does. He does. I try it. to. And uh, unless I'm really tired and that is kind of whatever, I'll just fall asleep here. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be listening to a mixed story and I'll find myself going. I've already heard this one three times. That's what happens, you know. It really is. It's what happens. So, Velvet Buzzsaw. Beans is, um, yes. I'm supposed to be the artist around here. I'll read this one. After a series of paintings by an unknown artist are discovered, a supernatural force enacts revenge on those who have allowed their greed to get in the way of art. Yes. Oh, my God. This film was so tedious. It took a while to get to the narrative. Like, it just I was meandering. To, the, the, but, but. The overdone, supposedly artist dialogue, which is pretty bad in real life. I mean, well, I think they were making fun of like critics yeah. for oh, sure. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, no, they're totally making fun of it. But at the same time, you know, it goes so far. Like the guy, the gar- art critic. Yes. Walking up to garbage sacks the and Jake going. Jake Gyllenhaal played. Yeah, yeah. That, it, that walks up to the garbage sacks and goes, ooh, that's right. interesting. <laughs> and, and he goes, yeah, that's the garbage. Right? You know. Well, um, his name was just, alone was kind of crazy. Mort, Morf Vanderbilt. Morf which I can't think of it. Lord Vander. <laughs> wait, Lord the, and uh, Harry Potter. Uh, Voldemort. 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 Vol- Vol- Voldemort. <laughs> so it's all Vol- yeah, I mean, you know, I, I... Well, I thought it was... At first, I was annoyed by how pretentious it seemed. Like, it seemed like everybody was very... All, every character was... hyper. It was... But then I realized, okay, well, that's the point. <laughs> it's like, maybe they're trying to show how shallow all these people are. And uh, I don't know, I kind of... I like the idea of art. If you screw with art, it's going to screw with you kind of thing. Like... Yeah, no, no. It, it's not like I don't... You become I your like art. The idea, but, but also, I don't... You know, here's the thing: is the stuff that they did that were the traps and the, right, you know yeah. that the art had yeah. was pretty minor. I mean, whole, the, uh, when you first saw that big silver thing that you could put your arm on, didn't yeah. you know that somebody's arm wasn't going to come out of that <laughs> at some point? Well, he looked kind of at the beginning or toward the beginning. He was looking at it. He was kind of thinking about putting his arm in, but right. And then he got cut eh, to a different no, scene. I'm not going to do They're that. Are you sure he does or <laughs> not? Right. <laughs> but yeah, I knew that. I knew when. Tony Collette was yeah you you knew that eventually, eventually somebody yeah. was uh, gonna put there but but you know the the problem is, is I was actually was, thinking it'd be some other appendage but yeah, arm works of course uh, b- but the pretentiousness was uh, so strong and it wasn't tempered by any uh, any spark of of humor to go with it you know what I mean. The if there is, was any humor, it was really dry and yeah, it was. Well, it was pretentious. Yeah. And the thing is, is this is I don't mind pretentiousness if it's done by somebody like um, the guy who did Young Frankenstein, right? Yeah. Uh, Mel Brooks. Okay. The thing is, is it would have humor. It would be pretentious as hell, but it would still have a certain amount of humor. And the thing is, is this lacked humor. Everywhere. I did like. Well, I liked how Jake played it though. I like how he. Played his character. Yeah, I feel like the humor could have come from somebody else. Yeah, I mean, but, but I'm saying, like maybe anybody. the guy that remember the guy in the truck that had the the paintings and all this weird stuff happens. Right. Yeah. They could have put more like humor yeah, there. Yeah. For sure. There could have been little pieces. I, the thing is, is this is somebody that doesn't understand that if you're going to do a parody like that, you they're they're you can't play it straight. And the I girl mean, at the just, beginning that finds the body. Right. She was very straight, like, you know, very no personality, kind of talk like this the whole time. Right, right. Straight about yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah. they're all kind of like that. Yeah, And so I know. it made it kind of hard it, to watch. It, it made it, yeah, it, it made it hard to watch, and, and you're going, ah, oh, well, okay, you know. So, this is taking so, forever. Where is it going? When he, when he walked up to the bag of trash and goes, 
I, I love what you're doing with this. I was like, oh, God, you know, that's just, that's way too far. <laughs> you know, it's way too far in something that just isn't funny, you yeah. know? I mean, all I right. I like the little bit of foreshadowing with the hobo man saying, I can't save you. Yeah. <laughs> he was, uh, you know what I mean? Well, no, but here's the thing I was getting to, and, and this is it. The last 10 minutes of the film were kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were... The, the thing is, is you could kind of tell that they were pretty well storyboarded, that they, that, that they were... They, that they were working towards something for a long time, maybe from about halfway through the film, they yeah, were just yeah. working to that moment. Yep. And and it paid off well. But, you know, I don't know if it was worth it to stick around and watch the rest of that thing. So I have a recommendation. <laughs> watch 10 minutes of the beginning of this film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fast forward, and then and, and then fast forward to fifteen minutes, so you can you got five minutes to set up the last ten, and just watch the last ten minutes because it's it's actually kind of well worth it. And another thing I like though is that they did do kind of a good job with with the optical effects because it was a little bit different. Yeah. You, know, you know, it was different from the stuff that you normally see. I like the see. colors because, you know, the colors we've thing. talked about how bright say. movies are. Right. This was really bright, but it made sense because we're talking about pop art, modern art, which is really bright. Right, right. And a lot of well, colors. You see, and there was another thing that they did that was well, is there was segregation uh, in the art. You know, I mean, it didn't look like it was all done yeah. like by one person. Right. But you see an awful lot, even in really yeah, good Yeah, it looked ones, like different know? people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looked like, I mean, there and the were main artists that we were... Right. That they're referencing it all looked similar yeah yeah that's right creepy in the you same know, way yeah they look like a <laughs> oh yeah night gallery for yeah, sure yeah. right you know and and the thing is is it looked like a lifetime of work because it had some strong periods it but it did yeah. have it had that uh, the correct thread through it you know yeah that was uh and then he was in the galleries looking at some of the crappy stuff that Right. Or, yeah. In my opinion, crappy. I don't know, but you right. know, he, and right. he was trying to right. critique it. But but you know what? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is in general, uh, they picked the art really well. They did, and the, they used a lot of well, the eyes following you. In the yeah. Art. I like yeah. how they played with that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they did, and they didn't they, overdo it. Yeah, they didn't. They they really didn't play it too hard which i you know i i appreciate i appreciated all of that right you know from a kind of a science too. like the visuals of it I the like. visuals of it yeah and the visuals of it the um, story was kind of lame but i enjoyed the visuals yeah the, the the thing that i i i say is this is like everything has to have an arc in it you know mm -hmm. but the effects had the best arc the best arc of of any of the characters for sure you know uh I was, uh, there's a part where John Malkovich was reaching at something and I was waiting to like all of a sudden be inside his head, like in his brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going down a hallway or something. <laughs> but that didn't happen. Right. It didn't happen. Well, My favorite yeah. quote though, your skin is a beautiful cross between almond um, and saddle I brown. I know. That was great. Great idea. Okay. This is what I wrote okay, down. Okay. I'm it's trusting a great you, idea. I, Velvet I'm Buzzsaw is yeah. a great idea. It looks great and has good execution overall, I think, even though it was the, I mm -hmm, mean, the, mm -hmm. the story was kind of lame. I got it, I got it, I got it, yeah. Uh, definition of art, once I accepted the slowness of it and it started picking up towards the end, I appreciate it more. Yeah. Um, the bright popping colors. At yeah. first, I thought, yeah, pretentious, but no, no, I thought it was, I, I like the idea. I just wish uh, the story was better. I, I, you know what? I, I have to say it, uh, Here's the the thing is it's a short story. By the way, didn't that cat creep you out to see it move? Yeah. yeah. I, I have no. Oh, there wasn't. You know the gags in it were great. The optical gags. Yeah. The one with the bus on the side of the bus. Oh yeah, where she turned. Yeah. Yeah, where she turns and, and the arm, arm's gone. Ar arm's gone. Oh. Did yeah. you? I like the um. I like the painting. The way they used that painting where she was sitting by herself. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. And she didn't realize it was her. Yeah, it was that was really odd, but that the was other, definitely Twilight Zone ish. The, like the other thing that sure. I really liked was that they threw Picasso Beach at the very end. Yeah, you know from the uh, yeah, from yeah. the great Picasso story. I mean, I I was like, wow, that's uh, it, and it's perfect that it was Balkovich's uh, character that <laughs> was doing it, right? You know, because you were like, yeah, because he's the only he was the only 
truly non pretentious character in it and he was the kind of the king well who was the one that there was one character that had a chance to actually more than one so they all kind of had a chance to get out of it at some point right and I think the worst one was the Josephina, the one that found the body at the beginning. Right. Oh, yeah. They all had a point to get at where they probably right. say would have saved themselves, right. maybe. Well, I'm saying too much. Well, but anyway, there's a point where they all had a decision to make. Renault, <laughs> Rene Russo almost made it out. Yeah. And, and I swear, when I saw that thing on her, yeah. and I thought, that's going to kill her eventually for some reason. Of course. And it did. <laughs> I think there's a weird thing. I don't know. Just the relationships were really strange to me. Like, I couldn't really connect with the characters very well. Well, you, you know the the thing, the thing that you had to realize is that uh, they all. It took me a while to realize that that this is a group. It's a group, yeah, yeah. and that actually, all related. actually, it's a it's a group of friends. They're all related. Yeah. Yes, they're yeah. all interrelated. They're they're interrelated, and it's not like they absolutely hate each other. Um, because they're the people that they relate to. And when something happened to one of them, right. they were upset, of course. And they came together. And, 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 you know, I thought that that was kind of... It, it's funny. Like I say, th- the only really thing that I just absolutely didn't like about this was was the the aura of over-pretentiousness that they put through through it all the mm-hmm. way. I don't think that needed to be there. Well, or if it was there, I think that they needed to react to it as comedy. A different way. Well, yeah, I feel like way. you have to connect to the character with some one of the characters right. at yeah, least. And right. I felt like I didn't make a connection with any of them. Right. I was just like watching him. You know, but when you get in, no, you really don't. You, know you I mean? really don't. When you're watching a movie, and it's yeah, like, you need to connect to a, connect, some, a character in some way. You have to connect. And, and, and you know, I think that that it was that though. It was that. Uh, pretentiousness that made it very hard to to connect with anybody you know yeah yeah, yeah it, it's it's that's a flaw that goes straight across and, and and kills something that was uh that would have been pretty good he's the one that got out of it yeah oh that's right remember he walked away at the bar yeah that guy got out of it yeah, yeah he that's did. right I was uh, the director. Um, I remember that name from somewhere. Dan Gilroy. Mm-hmm. Didn't he direct uh, uh, the Nightcrawler? Oh, Kong. Kong. Sk- yeah. So, oh, screenplay for Kong Skull Island. Gotcha. So he wrote the screenplay for Nightcrawler and and Skull Island. Yeah. Just I thought that was interesting. Yeah. There he you hasn't go. really directed a lot of stuff. Looks like. So he did direct Nightcrawler. Wow. Did That's he, the one I was thinking Did of. he direct Roman J Israel? <laughs> Free Jack. Doing... Free Jack is the one where uh, they're in race cars, right? I don't really know. That's what I'm not familiar with. Bounty hunters from the future. So now we don't have to race go. car. You're right. Yeah, it's race cars. Yeah, yeah Free Jack. Uh, there was a great story that uh, that they had about how they did. You know, a friend of mine. We used to to do a lot with air mortars. Um, special effects wise. Okay. Story time. Story time. It's story time with Mick. 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 And and I was working with Luke Carlucci quite a bit, and and we would they would say, well, we need an explosion here, and you go, well, is it an explosion that you need, or or do we do it with uh? with air mortars to blow something apart and then oh, okay so so he always would tell this particular story uh, about the film free jack he says you know there's a car it's about open wheel racers right oh, okay yeah a- a- in the future i missed this one has mick jagger and Emilia estevez though that's interesting yeah Rene yeah Russo. so there's a point where Rene russo hey ooh, she was hot when she was young yeah there was a point where this uh, car hits another open wheel car and it tosses it up and and it plows into a bridge that's over the race course and that plowing into that bridge changes time, right? Which <laughs> let's face it, it's going to change somebody's time, but <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> but but it change it, it it kind of becomes a device in the film, right? So it keeps going back to that one that one incident and the way that 
<laughs> the way that uh, uh, Carlucci did the a- incident is they took the racer's body, the body of the racer, you know, of a of a, a Formula One racer, it took the motor out uh, and, and you know left the wheels and, and everything on, got an enormous air mortar, and hooked it, hooked uh, a tube up through it, you know, bolted it inside of it this tube and put the tube back down a tube coming outside of an air mortar and fired the air mortar off and it went up and and crushed itself up against the wow. uh, over up against a, a, a over bridge uh and it, it's like believe me man you can really do some stuff w- with air mortars we we ex- we did a um what is the name of the the other Seattle band, the one, <laughs> the one that the lead singer just died. He just died. Yeah, he just died. Uh, you talking about? Uh, well, I don't know what you mean by just died. That could be within the last year. Yeah, years. within the last year. Yeah, I know Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell away recently. Soundgarden. Soundgarden. Yeah. So we did the Soundgarden one where the room is exploding, and they're inside of the they're inside of the room playing, oh, yeah. and it's exploding right. And, and what we did is we. Had the art department built a room with big, thick, uh, big, thick blocks of foam, right? Mm-hmm. Then we cut the foam up from the back, and then we just lined the whole back of the room with air mortars, packed oh, wow. right up against it, right? And then as they play the playback, they would play a playback piece, and then we would pull them out, and then we would explode the wall behind it. So that it kind of mystically looked like it was going through them when they made it the two images. Wow! Right? Yeah. So what we, video was that? I'm trying to remember because I, I was a big Soundgarden fan. I just can't remember. I'll, I'll think of it. Anyway, the, and there I'll was probably played at some point. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> no. all of this, it, all of the walls, and and we had glass, and and we did it all with air mortars. Hmm. But I remember that the director, uh, the guy who directed it, was uh, a member of uh, the Talking Heads. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, he's com- famous com- Mark Mothersburg, right? Oh, okay. So yeah. he's he's like, and it's great because he has this like electric blue suit on. I mean, electric <laughs> blue suit on, and and we're having this discussion, and and we're down, and and he wanted real explosion. He wanted to use prime accord and stuff, and it was like uh. infinitely too dangerous. And 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 finally, I said, look, I I, I can make a demonstration. And you will just love it. So we went between two stages where he had his offices down at, um, I think it was down at S and A stages. And in between two stages, right, there's there's this like, you know, uh, eight foot breezeway. And we took, a, we put a fence here, <laughs> a fence right between the main doors and went all the way back in the dead zone, you know, kind of where they put trash cans and stuff. We cleared it all out. And we put an enormous, uh, 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 air mortar mm-hmm. and filled it up and put a little piece of what would look like the wall, right? And then, and then I said, you know what? Because Mark was, you know, hyper, you know, he was like, ah, ah, ah. I said, you know, here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set him at the end of the, literally, instead of like having him sideways to it, to see it or something like that i just put this fence up and i said fire at the fence and i brought him out stood him in front of the fence like this and then, then i said then i had the the trigger i went boom and that those foam pieces came at us at about 900 miles an hour <laughs> and they oh, and they just slammed up against that fence and and it was a good distance you know i mean i'm i'm talking like probably about 80 feet Boom! slams into the fence and he's he's hanging onto the fence like this and he turns around and he goes that was awesome and the suit that he had (laughs) 
had gone completely, <laughs> completely like foam, like the dust. We right, put some yeah. dust in yeah, it, right? Covered in the foam, dust dust. and foam, <laughs> and you could see the pattern of the fence oh, in his awesome. suit. And yeah. the pattern of the fence was electric blue coming through all this. <laughs> so fucking funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, and I, I, and I started laughing. And then he started to laugh, and the two of us are just cracking up. And then eventually we went and we. Lined up like uh, ten air mortars all the way around and just blew that set apart. It was I feel like, Do they use air mortars a lot in war films? Like yeah, they like, do. Like you like know, they, well, sand and yeah. Stuff. What they do is they yeah they fill it up with um, vermiculite. Okay. They'll use like vermiculite and um, uh, Fuller's earth and uh, uh, walnut dust. Okay. You know, uh, walnut husk dust, mm-hmm. um, all, all all kinds of stuff like that, and they'll uh, they'll the Dig the, you know, dig the mortars. We'll dig the mortars into the ground. We, I've done dozens of these. You know, dig the air mortars in, um, and then blow them up. I, I'll tell you a really good version of that was. Uh, you remember Blade? Yeah. Oh yeah. You remember when the door blows and they're in that room where they kill all the cops, yeah. right? Okay. I built all of the sides of that in with. They it kind of looked like it was plastered when it was blown out, right? Okay, so what I did was I built the aftermath first and took and put uh, made it into an enormous funnel for all the for uh, four different air mortars coming in. Right. So it had the funnels and I put the funnels in the bins of the uh, in the bins in the crooks of the rock. And then and then uh Plast and then uh, put foam up in the rock and and the thing is you have to make a complete connection all the way back. In other uh, words, like here's the cone of the mortar, right? One out like mm-hmm. this. You take and you make something. You fill the mortar and and you know with so it's airtight. Basically. Yeah. Well, not airtight because you need, but but you need mm-hmm. a solid connection to oh, okay. make it blow it out. Right. You don't want to blow it just with air. You want to blow it with everything that you got and so when that blew out it wasn't an explosion it was an air mortar we had a couple of ex- small flash sort of like the idea of a flash grenade with it right with it but that was all an air mortar and it was or it wow. was actually four air mortars and you were looking right at them <laughs> here's the great thing about it is you were looking right at the cones you just couldn't tell because they had been formed into rock so when you were looking at it, it, it literally blew out, and you could see the cops come in through it, uh, or, or or the bad guys come in, or whatever it was, and and you could see all that because you were actually looking. The whole rim of it was actually made out of the cones of the air mortars and done mm. in stiff plaster. Wow, I feel like that should be reviewed by us at some point. Blade. I know you're reluctant. Yeah, I am reluctant. But there are fans out there. Yeah. Oh, for a blade. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I I kind of don't have any feeling either way. I remember the movie, and I liked it. Yeah. I do remember liking it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some mm-hmm. of the stories you're telling me are really fascinating, <laughs> and I think it would be an awesome review because we can talk uh, about the movie. Okay. You can, I can talk, talk about, the about blood. how much everybody you can sucks. Talk about the mortars. You can talk about how everybody sucks. Exactly. It's yeah. a great episode. Yeah. How how about the <laughs> right on, brother? <laughs> The bathroom? That's Wasn't there a bathroom in there? Or am I thinking of a different movie? I'm thinking of a different movie. Uh, you're thinking of a different movie. Oh, totally. Never you mind. remember the, the, the little juju? Right on, brother. <laughs> right. That's the best story ever. <laughs> I, I I think I told it to uh, to Daryl on the pod, uh, uh, you know, the retro movie review. Yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, all the time he, he he sends me little messages when, when <laughs> uh, uh, right on, brother. He doesn't put, he doesn't put like or hearts or anything like that he puts right on brother and i'll tell you that story sometime because that's funny <laughs> see that's what i'm saying there's a lot of stories that's that are within the realm of blade and why not have it in our you know where the stories you, you know where those stories really are they're right here i know well here <laughs> <laughs> Your head, you, th- you thought your head was bigger I than it actually is? I thought my head was big. I was, I, w- w- if that's at all possible. You're trying you to know? point at your head and you missed. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> Too many uh, mortars going off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, mortars. Uh. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. Yep. So. Um, oh, did we rate this? Yeah, we did. Did we? 
I don't know. I said 2.9, didn't I? I no, it was, was that the last <laughs> that film? That was the last one. That was we didn't write this one. one. Oh, we didn't <clears throat> write this one. Yeah, you know what? The thing is, is uh, now that I think about it, I'm going to give this a, one point, a 2.7. How do you start with one and go two? Uh, yeah. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm in middle. middle. Two, yeah, you're well, like 2.5. 2. 2. Point, yeah, yeah, I'd say 2.5. Two point I thought Jake kind of once. I mean, I would have given this a lower rating if it wasn't for kind of Jake's weird performance. I kind of liked it. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I liked the 10 minutes, you know? The rest of it to me was just, you know, overplayed buffoonery without humor. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Too much overplayed buffoonery without humor. Wow, I said that twice the same. That's amazing. I'm, I mean, I normally can't remember anything that I say from one moment to the next. I don't have anything to say. You, you, you left me speechless. Uh, I did. <laughs> okay, guys. That's it. Thanks for joining us on the Dream Warrior Review Podcast. Don't forget to tell your friends about us, follow us, and, of course, like us. We can be found on Podbean, which is an amazing app, YouTube, Stitcher, Alexa on any pod, iTunes, Google Play, we're on Twitter as well, at DW Review, and, of course, Facebook. You can find us there. You can also email us at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com. <laughs>